So with that, we'll move on to the next model. Uh, I'm still not telling you how to solve this problem. We'll come to that later. I'm just going to the next model, which is the skip gram model. Okay, and this is the famous word to wake which you are trying to implement. Okay, the model that we just saw was known as a continuous bag of words. It predicts the output given the context. Skip gram model does the reverse of that. You're given a word, you want to predict all the context words. So now I'm given the word on. I'm trying to, to predict the words which appear on the left and right side of it. Is that fine? So how many prediction problems am I solving? How many predictions am I giving you? Four in this case, right? So you see that this is a case where your uh, y actually belongs to R4, right? Of course, it's not R4, it's 4 into V, right? Because you're predicting the entire distribution. But what I meant is that you want these four different outputs. You just don't want one single output. Okay. Apart from that, does everything else remain same? You have an input word, you compute a hidden representation. From that hidden representation, you try to predict the outputs. You get a probability distribution. What's your loss function? It's the dash of cross entropies, sum of cross entropies. How many cross entropies do we have? Four in this case. Okay. And also notice that I have, I hope I have, yeah, I have changed W word and W context. They are flipped now. Is that fine? Okay. Uh, the role of context and the word has changed. In the simple case, when you are trying to take one word as the input and only predict one word around it, it just becomes the same as the first case that we saw in the continuous back of words. There is no difference there because there also you take one word and predict the other word. Right? So the entire mat remains the same. How many if you get that? And even when we have multiple context words, our loss function is just going to be the sum of the cross entropies for all those d predictions that I need to make or d minus 1 predictions that I need to make. Okay. And then uh, once I see a loss function which is a sum of some things, I am not worried because I know how to deal with each of these components and gradients are additive. So if you have the gradient of a sum, it is just the sum of the gradients. So as I, long as I know how to deal with one of these, I can deal with the sum. Okay. So that is why I do not really worry. Uh, all of you are at that level where you don't worry with the sum as a loss function. What are the problems with this? Already written there. Same as the bag of words, right? Now we are doing these four expensive computations at the end. Okay. So the softmax computation is expensive. So there are three different solutions, and there are three different ways that we can deal with it. One is something known as use negative sampling. The other is to use contrastive estimation, and the third is to use a hierarchical softmax. So we are going to see all of these and I will shamelessly continue for a few more minutes. So first we will see use negative sampling okay, because that is very easy. So let D be the sat, uh, set of all correct W, C pairs in the corpus. What do I mean by that? All words which actually appeared in the word, comma context pair. So you can look at the vector which I have constructed. So sat on, satter, sat chair, you can imagine that all of these appeared in the context of each other. So this is my correct corpus as uh, from what I got from my data. Now let D prime be the set of all incorrect W comma R pairs in the corpus and R here stands for random. So how am I going to construct this corpus? So I take a word, I know all the words which appeared with it and I know all these other words which have not appeared with it. So I will randomly sample a word from there and put it as R. Is that fine? Okay. So I can compute D prime, again D prime comes for free. D was always for free, now D prime is also obviously for free. Okay, so I have W comma C and W comma R and I have these corpora D and D prime. And as before, let VW be the representation of the word and UC be the representation of the context word. Okay. So VW will tie to these two and UC will tie to this and UR is something else that we will use for this hopefully. Is that fine? Okay. Now for a given W comma C which belongs to D which is the true corpus, what are we interested in maximizing? So let us think of Z as a random variable whether which tells us whether this is a true pair or not. So given W comma C, I want to maximize that P of Z is equal to 1. Okay? Now this is what I want to maximize. Now it depends on me how do I model this probability. So can you guess how am I going to model this? The answer is there in the figure.
can you tell me what's the model that I've chosen? Can you tell me what's the formula for z equal to 1 given w comma c that I have chosen? This stands for dot product, this stands for the sigmoid function. I know this is some uc representation, this is some vw representation. Note that these representations are not learned yet. I need to learn them using the training objective that I set. But at the beginning they are initialized to some random values. And the way I am going to model probability of z equal to 1 given wc is that I am going to say that it is just the sigmoid function of the dot product between them. How many of you get this are comfortable with this? Okay, this is the modeling choice which I have made okay, or rather the authors of skip grammar made, right. Now how am I going to, now what do I want to do for all w comma c belonging to d? I want to maximize this probability, is that fine? For all the w comma c pairs which belong to my true corpus which is the d corpus, I want this probability to be high. How many such pairs do I have? Many, many, right. So, let us call them as I have n such w comma c pairs. So, can you tell me what my loss function is going to look like? Maximize this for the first pair and for the second pair and for the third pair all the way up to the n pairs. So, what is it going to look like? For every w comma c which belongs to my correct corpus, I want to maximize that probability of z equal to 1 given that w comma c pair. Right? And since it is an and, I will have this product. How many of you are comfortable with this? Okay. So, this essentially and this is something that you do regularly, you should have done this in machine learning or pattern recognition or somewhere, right. That you want to basically maximize the log likelihood of the data, which is saying that you want to maximize the probability of every training instance, which is saying that you want to maximize the and of all these probabilities, right. The you take the and of all of them. Is that fine? Okay. Now, for the other case, w r belonging to d prime, what is it that I want to maximize? This probability, right, because I know this is an incorrect pair, so I want my random variable to output 0, okay. Now, what is this going to be? The probability 1 minus the probability that it was correct, okay, and that actually if you just simplify a bit, it turns out to be this. Now, for all the elements which belong to d prime, what is the objective function that I have? I want to maximize this for the first w comma r random pair, for the second w comma r random pair and so on for all the random pairs in my corpus. So, it is just going to be a product of all these probabilities, is that fine? So, now what is my total objective function? For every pair in d, maximize that, for every pair in d and for every pair in d prime, maximize the 0 probability. So, what is the total going to be? Is this fine? How many of you agree with this? So, for everything belonging to d, I had this AND rule. For everything belonging to d prime, I had another AND rule and I am interested in both the ANDs, right. Maximize for d and maximize for d prime. Of course, different quantities for d and d prime, okay, fine. So, you get this, once you basically take the log and so on. So, this is a simple set of math operations that I do. You will end up with this neat formula, okay, that for all the w comma c pairs belonging to d, you want to maximize this quantity, which means you want to maximize what? You want to maximize the, when will this quantity be maximized? When the dot product between the two is high. That means again what are you doing? You are trying to bring the context vectors close to the word vectors. Again transitively what will happen? The words which appear in the same context will go close to each other. What is the additional thing that you are ensuring here? The words which do not appear in the same context, you are trying to push them apart. Why? Because of the second loss function. So, you see the difference between the two now, okay. In the first case, you are only, opt I mean you were obsessed with bringing things close together. Here you are also focusing on the case that where you do not want certain things to be close together because they never appeared in the same context. Is that fine? So, you see that this is a more powerful loss function than the earlier one, okay. So, that is what the skip gram model does and in the original paper, uh, Mikolo et al sample k random pairs for every positive pair, right. So, that means if your size of d was n, what would the size of d prime be? k into n, okay. So, that they had that many positive examples and k times that the number of negative examples. And this was a hyper parameter which was tuned and they used a value of k such that it gave them the best results, okay. Uh, also, 
remember that we have this problem of constructing w comma r. Now I said that consider all the words which do not appear with your word and sample from there and put something there. So they used a slightly, so that means how do I sample that? One is I assign all the words a uniform distribution that every word is equally likely. What's a better way of doing that? Okay, I think I'll just finish this next time, okay.